All right, dudes, let's do it. Let's open this thing. Sweet. All right, so, so far, I see these is a cool ash glaze on there. This one was really cool. Look at that. Yeah, baby. Winter wood over sandstone. Uh, what else? These coasters turned out pretty cool. A little different. Got a lot of carbon in there. Wow, those are cool. See some interesting, cool stuff back there. Look at that. That's one of Kai's ash glaze only. Sweet. Looks like it got to cone 10 up top and got to like cone 11 on the bottom, which hot on the bottom, holy cow. I don't even remember what this is at all, but it's very cool. I saw, I peeked in here, look at this, look at this. What? So cool. Sand dollar over Riptide, two new ones from Mako. All right, very exciting to get this thing unloaded. What we did is we sprayed this ash glaze that we made that we got from Matthew Kelly. So it's uh, red art and wood ash. And we sprayed it on a bunch of different stuff. So this is, I think, lavender mist. This is, I have no idea. This is gonna be really, I did like take some videos of exactly what everything was. Still don't really have everything quite figured out yet in terms of like how we unload or where we put things or whatever, but. Sandstone, I think that's uh, green tea over sandstone. Pretty cool. This, and you probably can't tell, my first reaction to this was like, oh, it's not that cool. But then when you look, that black looks really nice over. It's a very cool black. Like, it's kind of shiny and metallic-y. Definitely can't tell on the camera, but I like it. More coasters. This turned pretty, those are pretty nice. It's pretty cool. So this kiln was just like so many test glazes, right? So this was, it's really unfortunate that I don't remember things, which I knew was gonna happen. I think sandstone and green tea or something like this. I remember this one was, it's pretty cool actually. White gloss over blue surf. I really like that actually. Wow. So many, so many things that are gonna be like, Oh, we gotta try that again. Oh, we gotta try that again. I should really be making notes. But this can serve as my notes right here. I'm just talking about it right now. So white white gloss over blue sir. So these are really interesting. I'll have to talk to Kai. That that must be green tea. It really like captured a lot of that carbon, I think. And that's what turned them black. It's really interesting. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, wow. Got a little pinhole on one of them, but very interesting. Another one, sandstone. Interesting ones back here. All right, here we go. Look at that, Norse blue and sandstone. I mean, everything is just a little bit more muted, I would say, like not quite so like in your face bright colors. Maybe I'll wait for Kai to unload some of this stuff, but there's just plain winter wood. Pretty cool, pretty cool looking. Very, it's kind of more of a gray, like, I, I don't know, I like it. And here was just, sandstone with a little ash glaze i think that the ash glaze i'm just like super pumped about the ash glaze all right but this one i think is my favorite one so far holy cow definitely gonna do a bunch more like that and it's on porcelain wood fire porcelain so fun here's muddy waters that's pretty cool over raspberry mist turned out very sweet Here's uh, woo, is that green? Is that green opal? It's so interesting. It's like turns almost like a blue color. So back left got to cone 10. This one I remember was muddy waters with green tea. That's pretty cool. That is, I don't know how the lighting is in here. Probably depends, it's kind of rainy and cloudy out, so. This video is gonna be like, you're probably watching it the holy smokers. So this was Celadon Bloom. I think over alabaster. That alabaster is crazy looking. It's like a purple gray kind of. Wow. And then this celadon, it's pretty cool, which this is the same celadon, which 
I have never had this glaze. I have never got to work really well, but I like it a lot better in the gas than I do in the electric. Celadon Bloom, love it. Wow, that's really cool. A little, little tea bowl thing. Man, this is exciting, fun. Ash glaze, I love that ash glaze. Thanks, shout out to Matthew Kelly. He gave us his ash glaze recipe. This is Kai's, this is not my mug, but very cool tester. Uh, all right, let's see this one. Got a little, uh, little toasty on the bottom there. So this was one that I glazed for the electric kiln, but then just decided to put it in here and I knew it would drip bad, but pretty dang cool. Green tea over copper ore, it's very, very cool. Uh, this was a cool one. I think it was a Red Art Chino, Ash Glaze over Red Art Chino. Um, one of the ones that we got from Pat, who we bought the kiln from. Green tea over sand dollar or something maybe, or wow, Norse blue with the Ash Glaze. I like that. I like that a lot. The Ash, love the Ash. Like I've said many times, this is just all basically a test kiln. Oh, that's cool. This I think is Ivy. Here's like Cinnabar. So these are just, a lot of them are combos, but a lot of them are just one glaze just to see how it reacts differently in the gas kiln. Uh, this I know was green tea over sandstone. Oh, here's blue surf. That's very cool. Blue surf with the ash glaze sprayed on. And this one, wow, that is cool. I hope I have a video somewhere of what this wall was. This I know is raspberry mist with the ash glaze, but it's cool. All right, so far I'd say the results are really good. Really, really good. Lots of beige and brown, but that is what you get with a little more um, like atmospheric firings, reduction firings, just a little more earthy colors. Um, I'm super excited for more. I think this is the Shino, the Mako Shino, with uh, green tea on top, probably. All right, the last shelf, which if I remember right from oh, Pat, she said that the bottom shelf actually gets hotter, which we saw for sure, than the top. There's a marbled piece, a marbled color piece that turned very brown and blue, not blue. Norse blue in the center, but kind of brown. There's the bright red gloss. That just stayed very bright red. Probably a little bit even better with the ash glaze on there. Oh, look at that. So this is really interesting. So this is the midnight rain over winter wood. Very, very different from what it looks like in electric kiln. This is B clay, so it's a white clay, but it turned like really this like red color, which is cool. Um, the, see the bottom didn't turn that. This was like facing right at the flame, so it just got flame right at it the whole time. Very cool, no pinholes. Oh, I love it. I mean, it's so different than in the electric kiln. See, some things can start, turn so different in the electric kiln. This is a uh, shipwreck. Very cool. Not too different from the electric kiln. Pour over. This is bright red gloss over robin's egg. And then here, okay. So this is the bottom shelf, which got a little heavy, heavier reduction. And this is the top shelf. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean this sand dollar turned really purple. Wow, it's, and the insides are so different. So even from the bottom shelf to the top shelf, you get a lot, quite different results, which is, you can get that a little bit in electric firing, but it's way, way, way more in this kind of firing. That's really cool, really cool. Alabaster over black gloss. Oh, so much good stuff in here. So much learning. I mean, the stuff that I thought was gonna work really well, kind of ended up working pretty well. The stuff that I thought was gonna drip ended up dripping. This is Kai's. Got a little pinhole back there. I think this is like Norse blue with like sandstone maybe. Ash, more ash glaze. Oh, very cool. So I'm just, my first impressions are 
love some of the stuff. Um, there's a lot in here that I won't do again, but overall, like the whole firing experience was really fun. You're so involved. I mean, that's like one of the best things about gas firing, wood firing versus just electric. Like when you, like I'll just load the kiln, push a button and then come back the next day and it's done for an electric kiln. But for this kiln, like you're actually involved in the process. You're like moving the damper to change how much oxygen is in the kiln. You're like, you're just really involved. So it just feels a little bit more like you have a part in the firing process instead of just glazing it and then coming back the next day and having it be done. So very excited for the next, next kiln, the next one, the next one. And uh, I'll throw a few of these pots up in the next restock on July 9th. Uh, there won't be very many of them, but maybe we'll have another gas kiln done by then and there'll be a few more gas pots. Definitely gonna try and do like more of this combo. That was really sweet. Definitely going to do more of the ash glaze with certain ones. I thought the ash glaze with like this one turned out really cool. Um, excited for excited for more of that. Celadon Bloom, this was really cool. So, oh, very fun. The July 9th restock will be the last restock, the last way to get pots online until September. So we are gonna be prepping for our epic pottery event in August, so August 12th and 13th. We open our studio up, we have everybody come, um, check out what we've been working on all summer. So we'd love to see you there, but if you can't make it there, we won't have any pots for sale until September. So July 9th will be the last one before. Check out the Patreon page. There's tons of great stuff going on on the Patreon page. Uh, we're sending up registration packets right away. You get coupons for all the restocks. You get like access to grab bag sales, restocks, all that stuff. It's just tons of stuff. So check out the Patreon page if you wanna support us over there. Um, thank you guys all so much for watching. More gas kilns coming. Appreciate you watching this. See you in the next video.